I like to start by, by basically giving you a, a little synopsis and a little idea of what our little group of uh, tasters are, and then, and then go from there. Now, it has grown into uh, more than just the SCA uh, crowd, but right now, our origins start about 20 years ago. We started with a, uh, uh, in a group called the SCA, Society for Creative Anachronism. They did, they do medieval recreations. Um, and uh, two of my friends that are on here now, we decided that uh, the best way to make friends is to bring whiskey to these events. Um, and after 20 years, we're still bringing whiskey to events. And, and now, of course, we're starting to do it online just because you can't do it at events. Um, Thankfully, uh, Sam Sam introduced us, and, and I appreciate you coming on. Uh, I, I'll let Jason try and remember what year it was, but we we brought in one of the first Pandarans to come into the U.S. market. Do you remember what year that was, Jason? I believe it was probably year three or four. I think it was it was fairly early on. <laughs> Does is 16 years sound about right, uh, Stephen? Yeah, um, yes, that probably, yeah, it would have been props 2006 or 2007, maybe. Um, brought it on, and, and, and I, the one thing we'll, we'll never do is lie to you, and, and, and we, we brought it in as an as a interesting and novel thing, and there's a lot of people, because of the historical aspect of our, what our hobby is, Everyone went, Welsh whiskey, this should be fun. And uh, I can say right now, I'm thankful that Dan reintroduced me to Pandaren about two and a half years ago, because you have grown and matured and come a very, very long way in your genesis. And I'm actually a fan, complete fan of it. Um, and I'm glad that this is our first actual first virtual tasting where most of the people on here have the samples in front of them. Excellent. Um, oh, great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's really good. It's interesting, um, obviously, how the spirit has evolved over the last, well, it's, it'll be 19, year, 19 years, uh, it'll be 20 years in September that Pandarian was launched as a, uh, a single malt whiskey and the first single malt distilled in Wales for over 100 years at that point. So uh, it was a big thing for us back, to, you know, 20 years ago. And uh, it's been a, how do you say, it's been a journey ever since. I can imagine. Now, I uh, I believe I saw that you've been with Pandaren since 2005? Uh, yeah, I started the back end of 2004, yeah. Um, but I officially started 1st of January 2005. Is this your first venture into spirits or, or? Have you done have you done other spirits besides this before that no I, I used to work in the steel industry uh, before I uh, uh, came to run Pandarin so wow. uh, I went from being a big fan of um, single malt whiskey to running a distillery so uh, it was a yeah it was a, I used to work in um, business to business services so it was quite, quite a change yeah 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 um, that that's that's really a big jump like was it just because you got to work with the spirit uh was it because it's from wales um what what drew you to doing doing pandaren well i had been working in the in the steel industry for uh probably about 15 years at that point and um what brought me to pandaren was i was i was working first of all with with british steel as they as they used to be uh and then with a um uh, I guess you'd call a service contractor. So in, I was uh, people who help the steel in, the steel works to make the steel. So not actually doing the work, but helping them, you know, various ways. And I, I was working on um, business development. Um, and the guy I was working for, I was working for a family company, sold his business. Uh, his name is Nigel Short. And he started investing in this crazy whiskey business in the uh, in the Welsh Valleys and uh, because we'd worked together a long time and he knew uh, I was a big fan of single malt he called me up one day and said did you fancy having a look at this you know and we just went for a few drinks and we um, went to what was essentially a tin shed in in the uh, in the Brecon Beacons National Park it was very very basic at that point uh, but you know you know when you walk into a, a room it's filled with whiskey barrels 
and the aroma just hits you. I just, I was knocked over by the, just the whole, the smell of it all and the, the atmosphere and the idea of it, you know. So for me, it was a big um, lifestyle decision really to get involved. Um, went from a director, being a director of a very big business, which was nice, but into something that was, you know, a bit more hands-on and a, an awful lot more fun, perhaps. I, I can only imagine it being a lot more fun. I, I, so, so because people have tastings, and this is where I'm, I'm, I, I'm not sure how this is going to work out. I think we should do kind of a mix-in tasting, and then I'll, I'll, I'll ask questions, or other people will ask questions. That we're, we're kind of informal-ish mostly. I okay. try to control as much as I can at the beginning, just to. So that it's okay. not too complicated. So, um, are you happy, are you happy if I put up? Are you happy if I put up a few slides? I've got a couple of slides to tell you about, a bit about the background and a bit about the process at Pandarium, which you might find interesting, and then we can and then we can dive into the tasting. Absolutely, that'd be uh, that would be incredible. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I'll I'll take over the screen then. And just uh, give me give give me a few minutes, and then interrupt me if you. Uh, if you want to ask any questions or, you know, as I say, very informal, um, just, just uh, as we go along, just, just shout, you know. And of that, while we're doing that, which one do you think we should pull first as a sampling? Uh, well, the, the first one I would recommend would be Pendarian Legend. And uh, the reason I choose that first is because that's very much in the, what I would call the house style of, uh, of Pendarian. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's matured in, in bourbon barrels and finished in Madeira wine casks from the beautiful Portuguese island of Madeira. Uh, and, and as I say, very much in the, in the Pendarian house style. So if you want to pour that out and uh, have a nose of it, and, uh, and then I'll come back to the tasting notes on that then um, after, after a few minutes. So let me just take, if you don't mind, I'll take over the screen um, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Just bear with me. So um, I guess when I talk about um, when I talk about Pendarin, uh, I'm always talking about what I would describe as a, um, a, a very much a wider conversation because when we're talking about Pendarin, we're talking about single malt whiskey, but we're also talking about Wales, you know, and it's all about what we're doing this evening. This is really exciting for me to be doing a virtual tasting. It's uh, only in the last few weeks that I've started doing these. And um, so it's, it's kind of new, new for me as well. So I hope, I hope we, all, we, we all get something out of it, we enjoy it. Uh, but in, normally I'd be stood in, the, in a room full of people, you guys would be there and I'd be there with you. So uh, it's re a real shame we can't do that. Um, so as I said, my, my background was kind of in this. Um, I, I was working in heavy, heavy industry, uh, which I, you know, I was really passionate about actually. It was, it was very, very good. Um, but it was hot and dusty and dirty and, you know, um, but, but, but nevertheless, you know, an industry that uh, we were all, we we're all very proud of uh, here in Wales. And in fact, my hometown is a place called Port Talbot, which is where the biggest integrated steel mill in the UK still resides. So it's a, still an important part of my life, I suppose. Um, but then we move on to whiskey and, uh, you know, the, the beautiful and um, fantastic sort of array of um, tastes and aromas that, that, that we get. Um, and, you know, for the last few weeks, my goodness, um, th I, this was me on the 28th of February with the Prime Minister of the UK, Boris Johnson, presenting him with a, with a, a whiskey I think we're going to taste this evening, P Pender and Portwood. And then just a few weeks later, gosh, I find that we're, we're not making whiskey now, we're, just, we're, we're still making whiskey. But we're also making hand sanitizer to keep the hospitals going, and uh, uh, we we really sort of had to um, get involved, I suppose, in terms of um, you know helping out and uh, using our ethanol alcohol to good effect. But uh, fortunately, we, we we're able to do both. We're still laying whiskey down, but we're also making some um, products for uh, the, the the British NHS. Anyway, back to, back to what we're talking about: uh, talking and tasting. Um, well, Pendarin is an independent business. It, it turns over in, in, in British pounds. Uh, it turns over about 13 million pounds. So I, I guess that's about 18 million dollars uh, thereabouts. Um, the, if you look on the slide here, the people on the top layer of this slide are our main customers, the people that we deal with in the UK. We're very much 
do a lot of work in the UK and people like Tesco, big, um, in the UK supermarkets can sell liquor. So um, people like Tesco, Marks and Spencer, Waitrose, they're all really, really good customers of ours. And then the middle layer, what I would call the prestige people, like um, Harrods, obviously quite world famous um, company where they would sell uh, limited editions of Pandera and they've got them on sale for about 600 pounds, $800 a bottle at the moment, some of our single casks. So great place to be seen, great place to be um, talked about. Uh, it's interesting. And then the bottom layer on my slide there is including Impex is we export to 40 different countries. So we're, you know, we're really growing our exports now uh, as a small independent distillery. So just to tell you about that. Now, I know you guys are into history. Um, so the last distillery before Penderyn in Wales was in the northern part of Wales, in a place with a lovely Welsh name, which is called Vrongoch, which you can see on the bottom of the slide there, Vrongoch. It's spelled with an F, but an F in our language is a V, is a V sound. Uh, and that's near Bala in North Wales. And I've got a few uh, pictures. So, th so this was a hundred years before Penderyn. That's one of the labels of, of the uh, uh, distillery. And we own a bottle of this, uh, cost us about uh, uh, seven or $8,000, but we've got a, a one bottle of this 120 year old uh, whiskey in the, in the distillery. So it's quite interesting. And um, uh, there was a lot of, we got a lot of memorabilia with it, a lot of stuff. They, we think that they stopped distilling about 1894, uh, sorry, about 1898. And this is a, a barrel that was presented to the then Prince of Wales, uh, who would, uh, went on to be um, Edward VII. <clears throat> and this was in 1894. So the whiskey was, uh, this was there's, there's not a huge um, history of whiskey in Wales, but um, there were some interesting facts. And uh, this distillery was probably one of the most prominent. Um, and I've got a lovely... Um, certificate of analysis here you know I, I i don't think the american authorities would accept this level of uh, of detail these days but i hereby certify that i have submitted to very careful chemical analysis a sample of welsh whiskey distillery whiskey and i find that it possesses great purity of composition is thoroughly matured and entirely free from all constituents of an injurious or undesirable character that sounds wonderful doesn't it um it's soft and pleasing to the palate and possesses fine aromas and a bouquet, and I have every confidence in pronouncing it to be perfectly sound and wholesome whiskey. So that's quite interesting. Um, they took themselves very seriously, uh, but unfortunately, they were quite um, they were quite short lived as a, as a distillery. I suppose the other big talking points for uh, Wales in terms of whiskey is you guys will all have come across Evan Williams, um, a, a Kentucky bourbon. And, and Evan Williams himself was from Wales. His, well, his family were from um, Dale in Pembrokeshire in the south, southern part of Wales. And uh, they, I think they emigrated to Virginia and then on to Kentucky where he's known as one of the founding fathers of the bourbon industry. So I think it's some interesting connections. Um, also the guy who introduced the idea of maturation for whiskey was um, the Welsh, uh, the British prime minister, David Lloyd George. Um, who introduced the three-year rule for um, mature whiskey. So this, you know, we don't have the huge history perhaps in Scotland, but we have some interesting talking points. So I know you're sipping your, your glass of legend there and I'll come back to the tasting notes, but I just want to tell you about how this is made. Are you okay so far? Okay. Yes. Well, this is, this, is, this is a picture of our whiskey still. Um, and, and our still, um, which we call a Penderin, Faraday still is a single copper pot um, and it's got two columns on it, one on top of the pot and one by the side of the pot. And um, uh, we put the um, barley wash that we ferment at Penderin into this pot, into this pot at around about 8% alcohol, which is pretty standard for the industry, I think. Um, and we draw it out uh, at, a, at a massive 92% alcohol by volume. So when you, that spirit that you're nosing at the moment, Pandaria Legend, is very, very light. It's very delicate. And one of the reasons why it's so light is it comes off the still at this very high spirit draw. So compared to a, a pot still, where, where the spirit would come off at about 70 or 75% alcohol by volume, at 92%, it really comes off at a, 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 at a high level. And that means that it's, it's light. It's not got as many dissolved sort of oils as you would find in a pot still spirit. 
So it, it, you know, I'm not saying it's better or, or worse, but it's certainly different because it gives a much lighter style um, of presentation. And uh, that's what the spirit, that's what the, the stills look like. Of course, they're made of copper and um, we have two of them. Uh, they were designed by a guy called Dr. David Faraday. And uh, David uh, is a descendant of the famous Victorian scientist, Michael Faraday, who invented the Bunsen burner and the Faraday cage and pioneered a lot of work in electromagnetics. So David um, has a good scientific pedigree and uh, historical background. Uh, and then just very quickly to show you how it works. Um, so we fill the pot and uh, alcohol obviously has a lower boiling point than water. So the uh, alcohols evaporate and they go through the first column and through the second column. Uh, and then we have a particular fixed point of uh, draw for, for the spirit on the second column. And, um, and, and that's how we do it. And so we've got two of these stills at, at Pendarin, but we also have a, um, a, a pair of pot, more traditional pot stills as well. Um, and this is what our pot stills look like. So um, why have we got the pot stills? Well, they make these, as I say, these make a slightly heavier, oilier spirit, and that allows us to be quite creative when we're making our whiskies. But the whiskies that you're trying tonight are pretty much all made from the Pendarin um, Faraday stills. Okay. And then just to, just to finish off the, the, the quickly the conversation on, on um, uh, how it's made. So we draw uh, our water from a beautiful um, water source, which is a natural spring underneath the distillery. This is a picture of a, a waterfall, which is about two miles from Pendarin. Um, it's called Scooter Ira, so it's a, a proper Welsh name. Uh, but we, so we have our own water source. And then the thing that really is very, for me, is very important in whiskey that sometimes people miss, the creativity that you get from the wood. Um, you have to buy really good quality barrels, good quality bourbon barrels, top quality Madeira casks. Um, so for what you're drinking there now, we use Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels by and large, okay? Um, we use others as well, but mostly Buffalo Trace. Uh, and then we use these beautiful um, rich Madeira, so Malvasia uh, grape, or sometimes Tintinegra grape. Um, but we love the sort of Madeira connection because Wales is quite a small nation and um, uh, Madeira is a very small island, of course, off, off uh, Portugal. Um, and whereas most Scotch whiskey is made from bourbon barrels and sherry casks, Pendarin makes this whiskey with bourbon barrels and these Madeira casks for, the, for what I would describe as the house style. So we've got some lovely points of difference, whether it be the Faraday still or the way that we, um, we use the wood. Okay. So how are you getting on with the whiskey? I'm loving it. It's really yeah. good. Good, good, good. Yeah, it's so, fabulous. Good so far, nice and light. It is, it's, it, it, I mean, this is our biggest selling whiskey in France actually, and they would drink this as, as an aperitif whiskey, you know, an early evening, probably before dinner drink. Um, you see the tasting notes there, aromas of, aromas of fresh apples, and citrus fruits intermingled with cream fudge and sultana raisins to create a complex, fresh, clean, and that whiskey. Yeah, I'd love to hear from those of our members who don't have the tasting kit as to how they're uh, they're liking it. Ronnie, you'd like it. This is a good one. I agree. I think you'd really enjoy it, Ronnie. Yeah, Ronnie, it's a, a, one of the light ones I think you'll definitely enjoy. It, it re, it's really about light, uh, fruity, creamy, toffee fudge. Um, Love that. You know, and uh, you, get, you get the fruitiness comes from, from the, the, the barley and from the bourbon barrels. We get a little bit of fruit. And if you, you know, if you know that, um, that there's bourbon in, you, you can, there's a very mild hint of bourbon that you can detect sometimes in Pandaria. Yeah, I find that bourbon sometimes adds a little bit of more sweetness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then you get the creamy toffee fudge really coming from the, uh, the rich Madeira. I like the fact that you have, you, you, and it seems to be a trend in the market now that people are going away from just doing 40% and going 43% on it. I think it just gives it enough of that alcohol kick that it, it really hits at home but but you 
sometimes. It doesn't. It doesn't seem like it's 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 more than forty percent. No, no. I, I, in the UK, actually, we bottle this at forty-one percent alcohol. But in the US, um, and this is down to Sam and to the guys at. Uh, in, um, we, we we actually bottle it at forty-three. So, um, but I agree with you, and this is a this is this is a feature of Pendere. And, most of the whiskies, if you all the whiskies you try to make, you don't really need to add any water. You should be able to enjoy them neat and not add anything. But of course, you're welcome. You can add water if you if you if you prefer, but you don't need to. Is it just me, or is there a little tiny bit of pink in it? Um, could be my light. Yeah, it's, it's just you, Fergus. Normally, normally, a light golden color. Yeah, Fergus, I think it's you. Uh, I don't see anything here. I think it's your light. My li my lighting is is very weird here. So. It's me it's cursing you. you. <laughs> well, I have an entire wall of stone, so I have no no lighting. Like my western wall is all stone, so I can't. I have no <laughs> natural light at all in the house. Um, I sent that pink to your glass. Thank you. So you know what's going on. Ronnie got accidentally got forgotten on the distribution. <laughs> okay. No. No. I, I, she I did not get forgotten. forgotten. It's oh. fine. I, I, I honestly, I would like to point out that I would normally be fucking with Fergus anyway. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, that's part of. The, and, and and another thing about this, Stephen, is that uh, probably of most people that you see on here, I've known them an average average of about 20 years okay um, so our, our tasting club started 20 years ago but i actually started in the society 30 years ago so there's some people that i've known for 30 plus years and and the friendships here are very deep in, in general there's a there's a few people that are again at start, we're starting to add more and more people to it but uh so so that's kind of the reason i think this whiskey club is fun is that it started with friendship first and and it's always kind of maintained friendship uh these type of tastings are difficult because we want to make sure we keep it fun and light for everyone yeah because um it's about the whiskey but it's really about people it's know? about never forgetting the funny yes i i'm i should pardon myself i'm sorry steven your wisdom is super welcome and i am just messing with my friends because yeah, 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 we are yeah. all in such a strange place and yeah. i think we all come together here to um share our love of whiskeys and learn but also um share our love of each other and our love of you know kind of messing with each other so ronnie my water's pink too Hey, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, what you get. I mean, I sent that to you. Grumpy sister. Um, hey, listen, I'm delighted to be invited in, guys. So uh, please, I'm, I'm, it's great. It's great. <clears throat> Look, um, I would say if you want to, if you're going to move the next whiskey, I'll, I'm going to talk a bit more, right? Just to get you. Uh, please you're, do. You're going to. Um, you just mentioned about this is all about people, and I got a couple of slides. I'd like to introduce you to a few Pandaren people. But if you're so going which to, which whiskey would we go on to next? Well, the one on the screen uh, would be the next one I would suggest, which is Pendarin Myth, which I think you've got in the tasting pack. Is that right? Yep. So again, this this kind of the Pendarin Myth sticks with the style of being light and fruity, okay. Um, but um, it's and it, probably a, a bit more on the citrus fruits, not as creamy um, as the first one, um, but fresh, lively, um, mixed citrus fruits with uh, apples, pears. Um, and a hint of tropical fruits. So if you if you start nosing that, and you know when you're nosing the whiskies, you know take your time with it. Um, don't don't get it too close to your nose because the alcohol just sort of rushes up your nose and can be a bit <clears throat> aggressive. I'm sure you all know how to do it, but take your time with it. You know, and uh, just enjoy the aromas before you get to the taste. Um, hey Fergus. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. We were uh, booted and re rejoined late after I think your introduction was over. Um, the first one that you guys, we don't have the tasting pack, so we're trying to follow along and imagine tasting it with you. Um, okay. But we're not familiar with which one that you tasted first. That was all we were asking. Oh, so that was Legend. Very legend. The legend. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and that, and just if you missed it, that, that's in the kind of house style of Pendarin, which is matured in uh, American bourbon barrels and finished in Madeira wine casks. 
We did so, catch that part, yes, but we weren't sure which expression we were on. So yeah, thank you. Yeah. And I apologize to the people we booted. Uh, we got a message a little bit later that uh, that basically we had booted a bunch of people that were sent to us by by uh, someone else. And yes. I was just trying to clear the room of anyone I didn't know, hoping that if I messed up, people would rejoin. So I'm glad you're back. You guys did a great job of, uh, I would say, salvaging that situation. So congrats. And uh, yeah, Sam, Sam invited us just shortly before you guys started. So we're just following virtually here. That worked perfect. Excellent. Yeah, so let me introduce you to a couple of Pandarian people then. And, and this, this guy, um, and if, you know, um, if you've been involved in any way in the whiskey world, uh, certainly with Scotch or British whiskey, you, you might have come across Dr. Jim Swan. Uh, sadly, no longer with us. He passed away three years ago. But um, without Jim Swan, there, wouldn't, there would be no Pandarian. Um, not in the form that it's in now anyway. Um, and without Jim Swan, there probably wouldn't have been uh, whiskies like Kilhoman and Cavalan and um, uh, like the Cotswolds whiskey. So, so Jim um, was a real pioneer of, of whiskey. Uh, one, one of the highlights of my working career was spending time with Jim. You know, one of the top five noses in the world on whiskey. He joined Pendarin in, just before me, actually, in 2002, and defined the style, uh, including the, uh, the bourbon barrels and the Madeira casks. And he was a great guy to, to work with, just for his all round knowledge in the industry. But as I say, if you know anything, especially with the smaller independent distilleries, Jim um, was involved after Pendarin, he got involved in a lot of other projects. Uh, but we were really pleased that he was with us at quite a, a, an early stage. Um, and because of that, this, uh, <clears throat> team of people you see on, on, on the screen. This is our distilling and blending team. Okay. So the lady on the left is um, our distillery manager. The lady on the far right is uh, our master blender. So that's Laura and, and Eister. And uh, the lady in the middle, Bethan, is, is training with them. And uh, Laura and Eister spent six years with Dr. Jim Swan learning about nosing and tasting. And um, obviously when we lost him three years ago, it was a huge blow to everybody, both per personally and professionally. But the legacy, um, what he, he's been doing, lives on through, through this team. And uh, we're really proud of them. They, they're all ladies, but only because they are the people who had the best noses for the job. Um, they got a crazy job interview, you know, when they came to us in the first instance, they presented with nine different pots uh, to put their nose into and smell the aromas and write down what they can, what they can detect. And uh, it's not just about getting the smells right. You've got to be able to describe in a bit of detail what you're, what you're encountering. So um, they, they're very much, um, you know, very highly qualified for, for what they're doing. So inside the business, I would say these, these guys, these ladies are probably the, the key, some of the key personnel to, to make, uh, you know, our, our single mod work. But of course, you need people around the business as well. And one of the most important people to us in terms of, you know, steady on, steady on, it's Jim Murray. Um, I'm sure you, you come across Jim, writes a book called The Whiskey Bible. Uh, but he's been really instrumental in, in, with Pandaren. Uh, he's written a lot of nice things about us. I mean, if he doesn't like something, as I'm sure you know, he bloody says it, you know, he says it up front. Um, but I, I enjoy working with Jim. And I, the reason I enjoy working with him is because you never know what he's going to say. It's, you're always on the edge. Um, you, I know that he likes Pandaria, and, and, but, but if he, you know, he'll say what he thinks and, and he doesn't hold back. Um, and uh, so working with him is always a lot of fun. And um, because he's a journalist by background, you know, when he writes his tasting notes, you know, uh, he writes some pretty nice, nice things, quite interesting ways of, of, of presenting the whiskies. Um, and this, in the 2020 Bible, uh, Pandarin, one of our Madeira finished whiskey, so again, in, in the house style, was named as his uh, single cask whiskey of the year. So um, uh, for Europe, so, so we're really proud of that. But th that's all important stuff because it helps a small distillery to get the word around. Uh, and, uh, and of course, awards then go along with that. Um, that's really important. And, and I'm pleased to say we won a lot of awards in the San Francisco competition this year, which happened just before the lockdown. So we, we, got, we got that sort of word out. Uh, but then coming back to people, I mean, here's, a, here's an interesting picture with um, whiskey royalty along with uh, British royalty. So uh, 
the Prince of Wales, uh, that's me in the background there, 2008 this was, then Dr. Jim Swan and Jim Murray, uh, two, two of the, the people we've just been talking about. So uh, interesting stuff. Anyway, come back to the whiskey. So how are you, how are you getting along with myth? This is spectacular. This is yeah. yeah well, like I, like I really myth. like That's this. Fabulous. This is, yeah. I'm yeah. loving this. Very nice. Yeah. Really like it. You know, like Excellent. butterscotch. I like it. Sticks butterscotch. on the mouth a little bit more than the last one. Yeah, good mouthfeel. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about it is it's gone. That is yeah. a sad thing. <laughs> that was went way too quick. Son, see this? It's called a bottle. You can order it. <laughs> I've got this one. Yeah. Come on, Shawnee. I've got this one. And send one to your sister. How about we all go over there and buy our own? And brother. Oh, such a good idea. Oh, such a good well, idea. And I'll, I'll, let me jump in here real quick and say, um, if you guys don't have Sam as, as a friend of yours on Facebook, uh, you guys, um, a lot of you already were, met him a, a few weeks ago. Uh, he's the uh, president of uh, Impacts, and he uh, distributes Pandaren here in California in the U.S. And if you ever have any problems trying to find any of the whiskeys from his line of the, the lines that he reps, you can just message him. And there's quite a few people here that, that work for him. All of them will help you out. There's Brian, who's in, in the Arizona area. Jared's in Delaware, um, uh, you know, uh, Dan's in Florida. I'm not sure where the other people are from, but basically I've learned, man, that's the best and easiest way to find this type of whiskey is to, to get to know the people that, that, that are trying to sell it for the uh, distillery because they, that's their job and they're, they're wonderful uh, people. And that's basically how we got you on here is, is me knowing Sam and Dan. Dan was the one that introduced me to him, and, and it's just kind of been, just kind of goes that way. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, from from Pendarin's point of view, you know, we started back in two thousand and six with with a company called Sazerac, who were a very big company, as I'm sure you know, and um, but they were way too big for us. They didn't have people who had passion for what we were doing. Uh, they it was just a, it was just people selling liquor, and with Impex, you know, and I know some of the guys who are on the call here. But we've had it's such a transformation because we're working with people now who have a real passion for what they're doing in the way that we do. So it's been it's such a so amazing to work with people like that and be able to reach out and uh, and be able to talk to you guys, you know. So it's it's it works extremely well for us. We're, we're, we're thrilled. Um, well, thank you for the kind words. I'm sorry chiming in, and, and Stephen, thank you for making it here. I know it's hi, pretty, Sam. How are you? Yeah, um, well. You know, uh, Sean, what you have in your hands, the Pindarian Madeira, it's actually what was imported by Cesarac. And shamefully, we had to bring their inventory because they were not able to sell. You basically have something like Port Holland of Welsh whiskey because this package is gone. They went to a more luxury uh, style, um, uh, you know, uh, of the Welsh um, Gold Welsh series, Welsh Gold series. So. You have something as, as a rarity, but thank you again, everyone, for your kind words. Thank you, Sam. Yeah, this one's actually from Wales. This is from Pandaren. A friend of mine went over to Wales and brought this back for me, which okay. is fantastic. Yeah. Nice. Nice. You better yes. open it up. The whiskey that you've been drinking while I've been chatting there, Pandaren Myth, is made from um, bourbon barrels and rejuvenated oak casks. So we use a, a technique which, which Jim Swan uh, worked on. Uh, of stripping the, the barrels and retoasting them or recharring them. And we use different levels of charring in the retoast of the barrels to get different flavors. So some of the barrels we use have got a, a light toast in, some have got a very heavy char. And uh, there are slightly different formulas for the sort of the, 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 the configuration of the barrels. So I'm glad you like this one. I'm glad you, you see the difference between this and the first whiskey that you tasted. Huge difference. Which one's next? Well, the next one, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's going to be Pendarin Kelt, which is the third in our Dragon series. Yes. Okay. Now, this is going to be something a little bit different um, because this, this is 
This is one of the few smoky whiskies that uh, you'll find in the Pandaren range. And um, is the, is probably the, it is the smokiest thing that we do. It's not as smoky as a, a Scottish Isla uh, cask. It's, it's, much more, um, it's much more subtle, a bit more refined perhaps, although it does have a connection with, um, with Isla. And this, uh, this whiskey came about as a complete but very happy accident for us. Um, so when we first, you know, when you first start a new distillery, you, you need um, two types of barrels. You use first fill barrels and you also need second fills because you, you combine the two when, when you're trying to get balance in, 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 in the whiskey. And when you're a new distillery, you don't have any second fill barrels. So we had to go to Scotland and buy some second fill barrels. And we bought five barrels which uh, had come from Isla. And we didn't really notice. Our guys in those days, I don't think... It, paid that much attention to what they had. They were just, they were just bought barrels, second fill barrels. Um, but they had Laphroaig stamped in big letters on them, so they should have known. Um, but they, 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 they poured our uh, new mix spirit into these casks, left them for four or five years. And then one day, Dr. Swan knocked my door, came into my office and said, Steve, I've got a bit of a problem here. Um, I've discovered a whiskey in the warehouse. Uh, and it just doesn't fit the Pandarian style. It's not light and fruity and creamy and, and all that stuff. It's quite smoky. Uh, I can't put this into the into the regular sort of bottling that we do. I can't do it. So, but it's actually quite delicious. It's quite attractive. Um, it's really interesting. It's very different. I think we should do. We should, you know, we can get rid of this really as a special edition. We can sort of move it on, and that'll be the end of that. So we did, we put out a thousand bottle special edition and uh, it was about a hundred pounds a bottle, I think. Um, and uh, it was basically uh, matured in, some of the whiskey matured in bourbon barrels, but finished then in uh, these Scottish Isla casks. And it just imparted a very mild um, smokiness to the whiskey. And uh, that was that, out it went, it was it sold very quickly. And Jim Murray called me up from the Whiskey Bible and said one day, he called me up and said, I, I just tasted your PT whiskey. He said, this is fantastic. You know, you should do this as a regular thing. Um, well, I didn't have any barrels left. We just used them all. Uh, but that was that, you know. But, but of course, he wrote in the Bible that year that Penderin's uh, peated whiskey is almost the stuff of erotic dreams. Um, and, and after that, you think, oh, I'm going to have to do this as a regular line. So um, that's how the, that's how Pendarin's style of PT whiskey came about. I'd, I'd like to say that we planned it, and uh, it was a really uh, you know clever thing we did. It was a complete accident, um, but it's been something that's really served us quite well as a little variation, you know, a little expression. So that's how it came about. Um, you'll notice that there's a bit of smoke on the nose, a bit of peatiness on the nose, but it really sort of, for me, it really comes alive in in the mouth, um, and you get a lot of the you know. Uh, again, not like not as full on as a, an Isla whiskey, but but you can a medium sort of peatiness. Um, anyway, what do you think, hey, Stephen? I, I'm 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 the Irish kid of the group, and, and I'm going to say something that's going to blow the the Godfathers away. But this does not suck. This is really good. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is. I do not like peaty whiskey. I like this. You this said blends, well, only percent of the I people know, here. Cringe. This, but this blends it so well. You know what I mean? You get you said it really well. It gets the nose, then it gets in your mouth, and it just kind of all comes together so very, very well. Which is the problem I normally have with PD whiskey. Yeah, I don't have it. I don't have that with this at all. It's this really is really peat. enjoyable. <coughs> There's smoky. A smoke and peat. Smoky. You're absolutely right. Yeah, this is a this is a very gentle smoke. So for those this, of us who are, you know, prefer Irish, it's amazing. So what you're saying is it's a gateway Pete. <laughs> <laughs> gateway Pete. No, this is a delightful smoky whiskey. I'd like to know from uh, Sir Justin, uh, uh, Stephen, the other Steve, what do you think? Because you normally are not affected well by Pete. Mm. I think it's brilliant. Wow. It's excellent. Oh, there it is. Uh, the smoke on it is just enough. It doesn't overpower the whiskey. It's brilliant. I love it. I don't think there's any such thing as a gateway, it's... Pete. <laughs> Ronnie, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something right now. Um, this reminds me of a friend. This is the, this is a male of whiskey. Ah, oh, God damn. 
Don't you make it so I can't I sass you. <laughs> I, I hate to do it, but oh my God, this is the yeah. why are you make us cry? I'm crying right now because I've tasted this damn brand. Uh, Stephen, I want to This is about the most emotion to me. This is, this, is, this is a beautiful brand. I love you, Raz. I don't. I don't think we can. Uh, we can uh, do that without explaining to Stephen. So Stephen, um, one of our. So again, we've been around for a very long time, and one of our uh, members passed away about two years. Two years ago now. It's just past um, two. Two years, two years yeah. and three days. Yep. Yeah. And so for for Raz to say that that is about as good a compliment as you'll ever get because yep. uh, that that. Uh, she was my champion. Yeah. That, that, that's okay. people. You suck, Raz. I already do that to you, Fergus. Yeah. <laughs> um, Job great to be audience, Raz. Well, that, that's that's yes, roughing the audience to drink penalty. Really good. <laughs> Raz, you're a big jerk, but we love you anyway. Well, what, what, one of the things. That, so is the sherry next? Yeah, be before we go on, just, just a comment. There, is this re I was really interested in some of the things you, you guys said. One of the um, things I, I learned, um, I, I learned a few years into my whiskey career. Was, um, you know, the idea of, of the idea of balance whiskey, the idea of getting the flavors, the balance of the malt and, and you know, the woody flavors and the, the, the wine cast. And so I was interested to hear you talk about the balance with the smoke um, you know, we've done whiskeys in the past, which have been too heavy on something like sherry or like, you know, um, one component has been a bit out of balance and it doesn't, you know, this is what we really strive for is really to get that, that balance in the whiskey where you've got the flavor sort of playing around with each other, you know, into playing. And uh, it's a skill that it took me a long time to appreciate and in, in how it's, how it's done. And, and this is one of those whiskeys with, um, where we've got a little bit of, you know, is it a gateway whiskey? It may, maybe, but I think if you like Isla whiskeys, then this will be too light for you. You know, it wouldn't necessarily suit you. It's an alternative. It's something that is just a bit more subtle. But your comments are really interesting. Thank you. Yeah, it's really nice. It's it's almost, it's very light. It's almost just a, a like your mouth is filled with the smoke and very well balanced and not like you're chewing on that piece of burnt wood. Yeah. Um, it, it, the smoke kind of sneaks up on you on the kind of the back end, which is is phenomenal. It just it comes in really light and, and just right off the back of the tongue, it it kind of just settles in. And it's uh, I'm, I'm anti smoke, and uh, you know, I'll, hey, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> Excellent. So uh, we're going to do sherry next, yeah? Ooh, yes. Okay. So just as a just as an introduction to this, then because. As I said a bit earlier, you know, the Madeira finish, and we do a heavier Madeira finish that you're not tasting tonight, but uh, is available by, by in Bex. Um, and Madeira finish is the, is the house style. But I think doing the sherry wood, this is the closest thing that you'll taste in our range to a Scotch whiskey. Because it's um, American bourbon barrels and we use uh, dry Oloroso sherry casks and bottle it at 46% alcohol. This is the closest thing I suppose that we do to a scotch. And um, when I talked about balance a moment ago, the first time we did a version of uh, sherry wood, it, it was all in sherry casks and the sherry just absolutely crushed the malt and it was too, too much sherry. And I love sherry. I mean, I really enjoy drinking sherry, um, different types of sherry as well. But, but in terms of making a whiskey, it was just too imbalanced. So what we do with this is a combination of about 70% bourbon barrels and about 30% Oloroso sherry casks. You get this slightly darker fruit, a um, bit of caramel, green apples, hazelnuts, um, sugared almonds. Uh, it's a really nice um, sort of alternative in our range um, and something that, you know, I, I didn't Oh, I've been muted. Uh, oh, we can hear you, Stephen. You're, you're sounding good. We can hear you. You're fine. Um, yeah, so something in, in our range that uh, a lot of people recognize and say, oh, well, this is more what I was expecting from, a, from a, a whiskey because it's got the sherry maturation in it, you know. So it's, um, 
yeah, it's one and it's a very, very popular part of the range. I want to say I, I was starting to read your notes and I, I just I got to the point where it said Welsh gods and I was like gods and I looked back Welsh gold oh wait that's that reads way different yeah yeah well yeah absolutely well Welsh Welsh gold is part of our branding and Welsh gold is very rare and precious uh, it's not mined anymore in Wales they're all it's all gone uh, other than some people have reserves of it and uh, you know when when uh, the Prince of Wales uh, is appointed he's always wears welsh gold in his jewelry and uh, his wife has welsh gold in her wedding ring nice. so um, it's a big tradition of welsh princes through the ages this has got a beautiful nose it smells so great so as you can see from the screen there from the list of awards we've done pretty well with this one over the years a lot of few gold medals and the San Francisco competition, um, which was great. Um, and uh, yeah, we, you know, it's, it's, as I say, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, a look for expressions that will explore the spirit. I hope that you can, uh, going through these whiskies, you can tell that they're all, they've all got, they've all got the same base spirit. They've all, they're all Pandaren. There's a theme running through it. And then you get these little flavor nuances. Um, which, uh, which you know, and some people prefer this to some people prefer a smoky peaty whiskey. It's entirely your choice. I got to say, I like this one. I'm a Scotch guy first most of the time, and a whiskey guy second. But this is delightful. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the uh, for 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 like anyone who had, who didn't bother to Google it, a sultana is a type of kind of a raisin of the when you get the light colored raisins. That's that's a sultana. Unless you're a queen in sort of an Eastern Indian place in which you're a queen. Sure, but what, I don't, I don't, know how I don't it, think they have combined queens into their whiskey, though. I don't know, I don't, I don't, and I wouldn't know how that tastes yet. I don't think cannibalism is so okay. Are, are you uh, just looking for an all hail the queen of Furiberia? Is that... Uh, <laughs> Exactly. I didn't say anything. Didn't. All hail the Queen of Freeberia. All hail the Queen, <laughs> of, Freeberia. Hail the Queen of Freeberia. Long live my gracious subjects. Uh, <laughs> my question, though, Stephen, if if uh, so, one of the way ways that normally our group gets together is um, the uh, the San Francisco Whiskey Competition, uh, World of Whiskies. Um, should that open up next year? Do you think that we could possibly see you visiting us for such an occasion? Uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we, we uh, last couple of years, either myself or the guys at Pandarian, we've made probably a trip every other month to the States, um, different, different parts. So we're very, very committed to being, being there and uh, being there in person and, uh, yeah, I, I would, you know, it's very, I mean. I don't think you understand what she just asked. She said, oh, are no. you going to be there yeah, for yeah. us to actually meet in person? We don't care about your other people. We, <laughs> want, we care about you. Yeah, and yeah, no, hey, I don't we need can, any. You can yeah. trust us for a good after party. I'm just uh, saying. Well, I definitely, I, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> I am happy to be held to that. Actually, she's an amazing singer, too, so she will oh, sing. Well, Great chances. And a well, fantastic drinker. His phone, his keys, his shoes. <laughs> Don't uh, you pick on my music, brother. Music's a big passion of mine as well. So I love I love music. So uh, awesome. Well, Ronnie, we uh, we are here you know for you. Welsh? I'm uh, sorry. Ronnie, Ronnie, do you know any Welsh tunes? Uh, I'll learn them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know if I do or not. I just know songs. <laughs> I'll have to learn their origin. We are the only group that has almost gotten kicked out of an Irish pub for singing too passionately and too loudly. Yes, oh we did. Almost? Yeah. <laughs> almost. We have been kicked out of the pub. <laughs> Although the Patrick guy is usually the instigator. I have video. <laughs> Oh, you stop that. You're not allowed to have proof. Was that the Irish bank? Yes, of yes. course. 
Come on, Laura, that's not fair. <laughs> I know, right? Who videos us getting kicked out of the pub? I have a semi-serious question for you, and that is, it, it seems as though you're, you're starting to develop uh, categories now. There's, the, there's your main line, which is the Celtic legend and myth, and, yeah. and, then, and then you've got a, another le level, and in, in I believe it was Brian was saying something, it was the 92, he, he, he considered that he was li almost listing it as a percentile of alcohol, not yeah. a... But then there's then there's the twelve year olds that that I think came out because I, mm. I stopped there because I was I, I mean there were so many bottles I could have picked and I, I kind of you know didn't want to go too crazy on this tasting but uh, it, what what is what is it that you're trying to do like are you trying to have like the intro set and then and then in the middle a, a kind of a, a a set for people which I think would be more like us people who yeah. had enough whiskey that we know what's really amazing in, in, in that next rung. And I have not had, I have not yet had not the opportunity to get to some of the 12 year olds. Yeah. Well, it, I, I, the dragon series that you've been tasting this evening is the, well, it's probably the starting point with Pendarin to, to explore. And then the series of whiskeys that we call the gold series, uh, where you've got that gold seam on, on, on the bottle. Um, they produced at forty six percent, and I and I you know I think probably for most serious whiskey drinkers, uh, forty six percent is the premium strength. So you know we do forty three, but forty six is probably a bit more premium, just as a rule of thumb, really. Um, in terms of age statements, I mean we don't do age statements anywhere else in the world, but we do them for Sam um, at Impex, um, really because we want to you know we we understand that. You guys know the Sam and the guys at Impacts know the, the market best, and that it 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 ha does help to put that number perhaps on the bottle occasionally. Um, so yes, that's a sort of more premium position for us, I suppose. And as the distillery grows up, maybe we'll do more of that. But we're not, you know, we're not huge on age statements because we believe there's a lot more to whiskey than just age. It's important, but there's a lot more to it. And uh, uh, but there are different, yeah, you, we're taking you, I guess, through some tastings where we're moving a bit more premium as we go through the evening. This is lovely. I, I, I'm enjoying it. Great. Excellent. So I have a question. So I was looking through the book on your, uh, the limited edition, um, going with like the rich oak. Is, yes. Am I reading that right at 59.8%? Yeah, they, we, well, we, for these for the cask strength whiskies, yeah, they go into the cask at sixty three point four percent or thereabouts, and then they come out at whatever they come out at. So um, we don't have a lot of evaporation in Wales because it's a it, it tends to be fairly cold and um, it rains a lot. Um, I'm not trying to put you off coming to see us. I would love love you to come and see us, but uh, don't don't come and see us for the weather. Uh, that's for sure. <laughs> But so just, just looking at the, all the other ones too, or do you recommend any other ones with any, with maybe with a little, with a little water in there? Uh, Cause I was kind of curious what you thought, what I was going to ask you about the uh, sherry wood, just yeah. bumping it up at 46. If, uh, if that was something that you recommend or how, what, what's your feeling on that? Okay. So, so my, yes, my personal preference, um, if you'd have been tasting the Medina for 46, which we do, I would say I personally wouldn't add water to that. But for the sherry wood, I, I, I do add water because I think it just benefits. It just opens it up a little bit. Um, okay. But I would say for most of our range, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily do it. Um, but the sherry wood is one where I, I, I personally might. Um, but really, it's, you know, it, it's up to you. But, but I think for most of them, I would say just try, try and meet. And if it's not working for you, then add just a few drops of spring water. Excellent, thank you. Actually, one, one, I'll just tell you a quick story. One of the, one of the interesting moments in my, in my whiskey career, quite early on, was when we met a very, very senior guy from the Scotch Whiskey um, uh, Society and the Scotch Whiskey Association, who came onto the stand. We were in a show in London, and, uh, you know, you get a bit nervous because we're Welsh whiskey, you know, the Scots, they are the guys to, 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 who set the standards. This guy came on the stand and said, well, I'd like to try, I'd like to try your whiskey. 
So we poured him a glass of, um, of whiskey. And uh, could I have some water with that? And uh, Dr. Swan was stood next to me, said, no, don't have any water, just try it neat. And then once you've tried it neat, we'll give you a little, little water. So we were chatting and, and he's sipping the whiskey and we're chatting and time goes on. And all of a sudden he looked down and his glass was empty. And he said, oh my goodness, he said, I, I haven't got any whiskey left to add my water to. <laughs> and, uh, and, and that, that was a really nice moment for me where I kind of felt, you know, we were onto something here. This guy knows his, his stuff and he's, he's been sipping it neat and he's enjoying it and he didn't need to, to add anything to it. So that was quite nice. I, I tend to drink almost all my uh, whiskeys neat without adding water to them. And, and I think that that's why I'm enjoying the higher alcohol uh, percentage on, on those things because now it kind of, in some respects, it almost forces you to try and play with water. When, when you're at 40%, like it, it, there's, at this point in my, in my tasting life, I don't think I would ever add water to anything 40% ever. Not even, probably not even 43. It has to be, it has to go beyond that for me to add water. Yeah. Because the, the, the juice is already good. Yeah. So Stephen, I haven't I have a question. Yeah. Uh I was researching uh Welsh drinking songs, but I just discovered okay. that the Welsh toast is call is is spoken like Yachida. That's right. Am I wrong? Uh Yachida. Yachida. Yachida, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just what? It's Where's busy. your glass, sir? My glass, yeah, yakida. 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 Um, yakida. Yakida. Um, yeah, it means it just means good health. Da, da is good in Welsh. Uh, yakida, good health. Um, and uh, you know, about twenty percent of the of the population of Wales speak Welsh. And uh, I don't know if you know this, but the longest place name in the world is in Wales. Hmm. Um, well, I mean, I do take my responsibility as the only person amongst this company who can sing seriously. Okay. Uh, so I was doing my research, but I fi figured a, a cheers was appropriate to start with. That's Ronnie, that's not true. We seriously think we can sing. I know. You do all think you can sing. And, and, and to be fair, you do I sing. Don't. I don't. Dear God, don't do it, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that wasn't me. <laughs> so, Ronnie, that's, 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 that's some serious there. singing right there. That was some very strong singing. I did. I did look up folk songs, and the one that we that most of us probably know uh, over here is the Ash Grove comes from Wales. Is the Ash Grove? <laughs> oh dear God, no! No, I'll learn how to sing it in there. In in. Welsh, I know. Well, I'm just saying of the ones that, that people might actually recognize as Welsh, or as, as of something they do, but didn't necessarily know it was Welsh. Well, don't go looking for the fruit of the you when you go to Wales. <laughs> I feel very disturbed right now. I think I'll drink more. You, have you heard, you, you, you know uh, the Welsh singer Tom Jones, Sir Tom Jones? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of Sir Tom Jones. Well, <laughs> I just, I've never learned Welsh songs. Well, in, in terms of drinking songs, right, you know, we have a sport in Wales, which is rugby. And, mm -hmm. uh, I've heard of it. Rugby football. It's a, it's a bit like American football, but without all the, all the gear on. It's far Indeed. better American It's football, far more I fashionable, I think. To be fair, we have professional teams in California now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you also have a Kiwi on the line here as well. <laughs> No, oh, excellent. <laughs> In which case, we're but, the, but the Welsh rugby, the Welsh rugby drinking song is um, is Delilah. You know the Tom Jones. Song. I do. Oh, yeah. also, oh, perhaps. Oh. I mean, it, it it's not Welsh, but I could sing. Let the farmer praise his grounds. <laughs> Let the huntsman praise his hounds. Let the shepherd praise his dewy scented lambs. Oh, but I'm more wise than they spend each happy night and day with me darling little Krushkin lan lan lan. Me darling little Krushkin lan. Oh, Grandma Graham Krushkin's 
lunch a gal ma vornin, cram a gray ma crushkin, lan, 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 o cram a gray ma crushkin, lan. I'm sitting in my living room and hoping not to annoy my husband too much, for I think he will get mad. So let's just all take a drink and with alcohol we'll sink all the mad that possibly could be had. Fantastic. Slacha. Yakidah. Yakidah. I will learn a Welsh song for our next uh, meeting. You will. Um, because of the group that we belong to, we have bards like like Ronnie who uh, have have great voices and, and have amazing songs that they, they sing and it, it's quite fun. That was lovely. That was lovely. You know, it's 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 uh, it's three thirty in the morning here, and that sounded so good. Uh, I mean, I could have kept singing, but I felt like I was monopolizing your time. So are you up for the rest of the morning, or are you planning on going back to bed? Uh, it's in the balance because I'm not really sure whether this is a late night or an early morning yet. Yeah. It's, it's, I can it's, sing uh, more songs. I suppose it depends <laughs> how much more uh, whiskey you drink. Yes, it depends on how. How much more we get go. Part of the uh, tasting. What was that? There's a couple more tastes to do. There's yeah, two more bottles. There were a couple. There's only I've got one two. more. I've got two left. Okay. <laughs> so what, what have we got? What have we got left? We now have I the think we're... Wood, uh, single malt. Uh, Port and sherry. Portwood. Portwood's all left. That's yep. all. Portwood's all. Just the portwood. Just yeah. the portwood. We have, Kelp, we have the kelp single and the portwood. Okay, let me find the portwood. Um... You missed the kelp because we had already tried. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah the kelp single was third. Yeah. We did, yeah, exactly. The kelp single was third. Kelp strength the kelp. Okay, Sam you all boy. talked over each other, then made us miss it. Sorry, dear. Ooh. You well, saying you cold? I will say you have you have a stiff competition here because. Uh, there's a couple of us here who our favorite favorite portwood is a Balbini 12, uh, 21 year old portwood. Okay. So, but I'm always anytime I get to try a pet portwood, I get excited. So this will be fun. Okay. Oh my God, the nose on this is just. Hey Fergus, you want one bottle of Balvenie or three bottles of Pendere? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Fergus gets excited by portwood. If that were the logic week, I would all be drinking Jack Daniels right now, sir. That's a big fat lie. <laughs> <laughs> so th th this is again mm. from our um, from the the forty six percent range, the gold, the gold Welsh gold series of whiskies, and I suppose in terms of uh, we're talking really fruity here. We're talking about a. Um, uh, rich dried fruits, dark chocolate, maybe cranberries. Um, this is one of the, I guess, really full-on fruity, rich sort of whiskies that uh, that we do. Um, we, we do a very rich Madeira as well, which is kind of as probably as jammy and as um, full-on as this one. But but I really love this. One of my favorite expressions of, of Pandaren. Um, so, Bit of dark chocolate in there, which is quite, I think, is quite interesting, and it and it gets really dry. It gets really dry on the finish. Um, so yeah, I mean, how does it how does it measure up against your Balvenie? Yeah, this one definitely gets the Raz stamp of approval. This one, uh, much like uh, what was it, the Myth, I love both of these. They've got a kind of a similar. Uh, um, I don't know, dry fruit sweetness to the middle of them. This is brilliant. I love this. Really enjoy the finish on this. I'm going to totally put Jason on the spot. And I'm going to I'm going to ask him what he thinks of the Pandaren line since uh, uh, he had an opinion. You're a dick, Fergus. No. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, the, the Pandaren line has come a long way from, from when we initially investigated back in, gosh, 2004 or 5, I think. 
Um, it, it was early, early on, and and you were guy, you guys were just ramping up, getting your your sea legs, if you will. Uh, yeah. What we've experienced here tonight is definitely leaps and bounds above where you started. It's it's an impressive move to some seriously quality spirit. Um, Thank you. I, I will absolutely say that uh, the Portwood is is my favorite of the night. Um, okay. The Balvenie 21 is my go-to, and, and this is some pretty good stiff competition for it. Um, it it's not quite as viscous as the Balvenie. Nope. It's a little lighter, but that makes it, I think, uh, a le little easier on the palate. A um, mm. little, little easier to, to come to and, and enjoy. Uh, not quite as rich as the, the Balvenie is. Uh, as a, really a dessert scotch at that point. Uh, this yeah. one could be an everyday drinker easily. Oh, okay, that's interesting. That's and interesting. Jared's point of it's a lot uh, more affordable, so it's yeah, absolutely buy two or three bottles and have on the shelf. Um, I like this one. I love your bottling for the uh, gold range. The I, I I think that so so when when you look at this this bottling for the for your your dragon range. I think it it stands out really well, and I love I love the boxes because once you if you if you have a smart kid on the sh stocking shelf, if he has all three right next to each other, you can actually yeah. turn the corners and, and and make it into a full dragon and, and make the whole like scene there, which I love that. But but that is and, and I I don't want to say gimmicky, but I'm saying gimmicky, so I'm going with it. it it's it's a different. Oh, huh? I said you're a delightful nerd on that, Fergus. You know, I here's the deal is, and this is one of the reasons I'm I love what we do is that that look, uh, yes, we're recording it, and yes, it's going to go out to the real world if you're okay with it. But at the end of the day, I want to be honest with 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 our comments and the way we talk and, and the way we are. But your your bottling for the your as you get higher in range. Your bottling, you you have whoever is doing it is it just knows how to knock it out of the park because that is elegant. It's beautiful. I love the fact that the glass is it thickens out at the bottom, and so it, it almost looks like it's being held in a container. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's beautiful. I love the fact that you pay attention to your your lines and you you kind of grow the line as far as the way it's being presented as well as as the flavor. Yeah, I'll, I'll second Fergus on that one. The the packaging is outstanding, and uh, for the most part, I, and I'll I'll speak for Raz and possibly a lot of the other group here, packaging doesn't tend to impress us much. Okay. What impresses us really is what's in that packaging. But with that said, uh, your your bottle design is absolutely gorgeous, spectacular. Actually, it, it elegant is a, the greatest expression of that. I think. No, that's yeah. kind. Of, thank you. Yeah, yeah. It's. it's I mean, I've been blessed to work with um, a guy called Glenn Tetzel, who just did, did, did all the design work. And uh, it's important when you're a small distillery and you're from Wales, not from Scotland. You need to be able to stand out. So that's. It's. It's, it's good. Yeah. So thank you. I appreciate, appreciate that. Yeah. And Jason, to your point, and I know you went from disliking to home um, and then to now liking him, which is a great compliment. But also. Comparing Belvini 21 Portwood to this, it's a huge compliment to Pindarian because a lot of people go crazy for Belvini. It's a, you know, it's about what, $200, $220 a bottle. And this is um, with, after my fight with Steven, it's under a hundred bucks. So great compliment. Thank you very much for you being so open and honest. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that. To be fair, I like this better than the Balvany Port, but I'm not a I'm not the Balvany guy. So <laughs> I do like that is the one Balvany I do like though is that, that double Portwood. But uh, um, I would drink this ahead of that any day of the week. Yeah, and as to packaging, you know, it's made by a very famous French company called Severglass. But we were part of this historical development because when I took my team to um, uh, distillery that was a few years ago this bottle was in works and Stephen was kind enough to kind of let the cat out the box and he showed us when it was in a kind of a you know starting 
uh, stage of, uh, of, and he just asked, what do you guys think? And we absolutely loved it. And now we see it in kind of a final version. It's really beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Yeah, no, it was, it was obviously the, the time interview guys coming over was great. <clears throat> and um, it's, uh, you know, it took two years to, to make that bottle and put a lot of it, a lot of it attention into, the, into it. So uh, it's nice to hear. Good to hear. Um, I really appreciate the fact that even though you spent two years working on it and everything else, you didn't go over the top. Um, I, I will walk away from a whiskey if it's over packaged, over, over yeah. stylized. That is just classy and it works really well. So kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, just start sticking on that topic while you're just enjoying the whiskey. Let me just show you a couple of examples. Not all of these are available in states at the moment, but some of them may be in the future. Who knows? But just give you an idea of the sort of creativity that I, you know I'm very blessed to be working with. Um, and I'll show you this a quick second. Um, so of course, so we like to think about Wales as um, uh, the land of legends. Okay. So, you know, Wales is, is almost the undiscovered Celtic country. You know, everybody's heard of Scotland, everybody knows Ireland. But we always find that Wales is, um, you know, not quite as well known. People know the Prince of Wales, but they don't necessarily know much more. And um, oh, So what is your favorite song? My favorite, my, well, my favorite Welsh well, What song. is Wales? Is, yes, what is your favorite Welsh song? Um, you're not going to make me sing now, are you? Because you'll be sorry if you make me sing. No, I want to know what it is. I'll learn it and then I can sing it back to you. Um, well, the most the most rousing Welsh song of all would, would be the Welsh National Anthem, which is in completely in Welsh. Um, I know. I did look that up. It was very slow, though. It, it, it translates to Land of My Fathers. That's the, the, the title. And um, it's, I mean, there's nothing more rousing than standing in, in a Welsh rugby match in, in the stadium in Cardiff and, and hearing 70,000 people sing. Uh, land of my fathers is quite astonishing actually so uh, yeah that would, that would be probably the best known uh, but there's lots of other you know Welsh old Welsh hymns and Welsh sort of songs you can explore there's lots of them I shall um, so if you look at, uh, look at the side here you can see you may pick out some of the you know there's uh, Wales has more castles per square mile than any other country we have a lot of a lot of, uh, if you ever come to Wales, there's a lot to see. It's a very rural country, but uh, there's a lot of history. Um, there's a lot of personalities as well. And, uh, and in terms of design, bottle designs, I mean, this is <clears throat> one example, um, which um, is just this uh, bottle for you at the moment, but it's uh, to celebrate a Welsh poet called Dylan Thomas, who um, was probably one of the most famous living poets when he lived in the 1950s, 40s, 50s. Um, he spent a lot of time in New York. He, he filled uh, theatres. People wanted to hear him speak. And uh, the occasion of his centenary would have been his 100th birthday uh, was in 2014. This was a celebration of Dylan Thomas and his poetry. Um, I mean, it's said that Bob Dylan named himself after Dylan Thomas. I know he was a big fan of Dylan Thomas. I'm not 100% sure that he did, did that, but, um, but there is a connection. So that was quite an interesting design project. Um, and we have a, an opera singer called uh, Sabrin Tervel. And this beautiful bottle, um, again, created by Glenn Tetzel. Uh, and it's to celebrate the sort of idea of the theater. And if you have a look at that, it's, uh, and it, if, you could, if you could hold it, it's, um, it's got a, a velvet feel to it. Um, this may be over, over packaged perhaps for some, uh, but, but it's, uh, it's very tactile, you know, you, you pick it up, you can't put it down. It's quite an interesting package. Absolutely it's beautiful. It's not over packaged for these people, trust me. I, are... I actually think that one's glorious, and I'm the guy who bitches about packaging me. Yeah. Okay. I, I think the story between the box and the bottle, the, the movement between the yeah. box and the bottle is spectacular yeah. because it Perfect. definitely evokes that velvet cape. I love it. Yep. God, I love that graphic on the lava label. That's outstanding. I can be here and show yours again. That, that's a that's that's a brand brand brand. Brand. Yeah, that's Our a The bottle's actually covered in, in in felt as well in velvet. Yeah, yeah. So nice. the, the picture on the, the picture on the bottle, right? Is it's Bryn Terrell dressed as as Falstaff uh, in the opera, 
and that that picture is actually a cover of a Deutsche Grammophon record. And so when we decided we wanted to use it, of course we had to get permission to use it. So we had to pay a royalty to Deutsche Grammophon for the use of it. We also had to pay a, a royalty to the guy who took the photograph and also to the person who designed the costume. So um, it was a pretty, uh, but it's so it's such, so right for you know for the for the for the whiskey. It's great. And then if we come back to, uh, to singing, um, this is a uh, Rhiannon. This is another, these whiskies are from something called Icons of Wales, where we produce, they're all produced in 70 CL at the moment, which is why we can't get them to the States because they're the wrong bottle size. Um, but you were asking about, about Welsh songs. Um, I guess we all know Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks, and, and she wrote a song called Rhiannon, which is, comes from this old Welsh tale from the Welsh Book of Tales called the, the Welsh Book of Tales is called the Mabinogion. And um, and uh, I don't think she knew when she wrote the song that that, that was the origin, but no, uh, that that's me. Yeah, that's yeah, you. Pretty sure. Yeah, absolutely. Braz agrees, I can see. <laughs> Are you gonna sing this one for us? No, I was what? No, I was I was just uh, on another tab learning how to sing your Welsh national anthem. <laughs> okay. But listening also. Um, but yeah, no, that's gorgeous. Um, but what? Yeah, tell yeah. us about this whiskey. So 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 well. I mean, design for this. <clears throat> excuse me. Design uh, really the design of this um, of this. Uh, it's just an example of how we like to use design to sort of um, capture some people's attention. And, um, and the, whiskeys the whiskeys vary from lightly peated to light sherry wood to um, rich Madeira, whatever. They're always slightly different, different whiskeys, but it's a whole series of whiskeys with different, uh, uh, different bottlings. And they're all are limited. Any, are any of these available in the States? N not at the moment, um, which is why I hesitate to show them to you really, but I just wanted to well, give maybe. you like, in terms of the design but maybe in the future we'll sam and i will get our heads together about what, what we think uh, will, will work you know for the, for the i got one here fergus when you come see me i'll share it with you <laughs> i'm just want... teasing us now just teasing if, we, if we all go to wales i'm just saying <laughs> I, no i'm, I'm ready beautiful. i loved it when i was there i, I will say this much after Right. And so our, our big tasting event in this is in October and it got canceled, of course, like everything else. My thinking is the heck with SCA. Let's just plan a trip to uh, Wales, Scotland, to Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, a week in Ireland, a week in Wales and Scot in Scotland. Let's do it. Forget okay. about this. Let's do it. Uh, proper so tasting. So Fergus, I'll just say that, so we went to, to Wales for our honeymoon um, oh, wow. years ago and had a wonderful time. And we've always wanted to do a 10th anniversary trip where we would invite all our friends and go back and do like Will a- that be next year? Trip. No, it's in like four oh. years. So you, you know, time to like save up your money and everything. I, I, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm, I was supposed to be in Europe in um, oh, two weeks. So yeah, I'm ready to go. Hey, Fergus, are we at the point to stop recording or do we have more? No, no, no. I, I think we can keep going right now. I, 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 I mean. No, unless, he meant recording. Uh, yeah, just recording. The recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we've gotten off top. Are you done, Stephen? Well, I, I, well, I got one more thing. If you want to know, um, if you're going to come, if you're going to come to Europe and come to Wales, the, a good time to come will be in about this time next year, if we're all allowed to to, to do that, uh, because we yesterday, day before yesterday, we had. Um, planning permission to build our new distillery in North Wales. So we're building a second distillery in a place. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, uh, and, and so that's going to be opening in March or April, 2021, all, all being well, of course, you know, so um, I'm just going to quickly show you very quickly. Um, how it's so going to look. Are we looking at any uh, like 20, 21 year old or older whiskeys coming out here in the near future? Cause you're at that Genesis, right? You started 20-ish years ago? Yeah, yeah, it'll be, it'll be 20 years. <clears throat> excuse me, it'll be 20 years in September. Wait a so, minute, they have the same anniversary as we do, basically? I believe so. They do. I think we have to have a... Well, uh, I think it's Kismet. I think, it's, I I think, think, think it's, we have to have a virtual... Party. Drunkathon. 
I think our 20th we anniversary. Go to, we should all, well, we, we're going to work on that, uh, Ronnie, yes. But I think we should work on a trip to, uh, maybe yeah. our 21st anniversary should be in uh, Wales. Next year we'll all be legal to drink, 21. There you yeah. go. True. Anyway, sorry, our, sorry for interrupting. Our, our, our anniversary is uh, for distilling was the fourteenth of September two thousand. That was when um, whiskey was first distilled uh, in Wales for for hundred years. Fourteenth of September. Anyway, so this is the this is the, the new distillery project, and it's um, in an old boarding school um, in a place called Flandidno, lovely Welsh town, old Victorian seaside resort, uh, beautiful town. Uh, quite um, on the north north part of Wales, on the North Wales coast. And um, uh, let's see if we can just move the slide on. Oh, wait, did we want to stop recording? No, you're okay. I mean, you're okay from my point of view. It's up to you. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're good. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep it going. Right. No worries. Just, just checking. Uh, that's that's what it uh, that's what the building looks like at the moment. It's uh, it's a really lovely. Uh, I think it was built in about 1882. And uh, needs a bit of needs a little bit of work. I think it's fair to say, but um, it's a, a five million pound project uh, to do, especially the back end of the building it needs needs a bit, bit of uh, tender loving care. Um, but the idea is that we put and, and we put all the vessels in in the windows and we drop the sills uh, in the front of the building, and then we put a big glass atrium on the back of the building which is uh, where the uh, shop and the, the sort of visitor experience will be. And it'll be one, one of our Pendarian Faraday stills. Um, so it's not gonna be a huge distillery. It'll, they'll make, we'll make one barrel of whiskey a day there probably. It's gonna be quite small, but it's, you know, hopefully because of the location and uh, the fact that it's um, a couple of miles from some very beautiful castles and uh, Welsh history, I think we'll attract a lot of people to come and see us there. And uh, whereas, we, you know, I was explaining to you about how our, our PT whiskey came about earlier and uh, we make the PT whiskey as a barrel finish. Well, in this distillery, we're going to make it from the barley. So we're going to do it um, properly, I suppose you could say, um, but we'll do it by malting the barley and smoke the barley and then, and then taking it through. So we'll have a particular style of whiskey that we'll produce here that we don't do any, anywhere else. So... Do you have also, um, I might have missed this earlier, but do you, um, where does the barley come from? Do you also manage where uh, that farming happens? Um, we, all our barley comes from the UK. It doesn't all come from Wales. We do use Welsh barley, but in, in truth, the climate in Wales is not great for producing the best barley. We don't get enough sunshine hours really. To, to, to get the, you know, the best well barley. I wish I could send you some from California you know that would be uh, you've got too much there you've got you've got to send us some you know I'm I shall I'll I'll think on it hard yeah 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 do you know how we can tell when it's summer, when it's summer in Wales how the rain gets warmer <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid that sums it up so, so, the, so all I can say is that uh, we use some Welsh barley, but we also source it from the east coast of the UK. Um, and so yeah. what we're looking at right now, I see these trees. Are, are you planning to do something specific with the garden? or? Uh, yeah, we, well, yeah, we're just going to land, landscape it and uh, just, just to make it, uh, you know, I think it's, it's quite a... This yeah. is really more of a, a distillery than anything else. It's it yeah it's a it's a working distillery but it'll That's also be focusing so exciting on I want to come visit it everyone yeah. we must come visit it oh well I, if you're going to make a trip to the UK you want to come to South Wales and see Pendere in, in the Brecon Beacons and then it's a, there's a very short flight from Cardiff to a little island uh, in the north of Wales called Anglesey and then a 25 minute flight and then you you're into North Wales and the most beautiful countryside that you'll see anywhere Mount Snowdon and uh, some, some beautiful landscapes. And then you're, you're a couple of minutes from, uh, from seeing the distillery, so thanks. As a guy that does uh, design work, specifically glass work, I love what you're doing here. It's gonna be beautiful. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's trying to keep the best of the Victorian architecture and then, but on the back of the building, which was a combination of um, old 1940s, 50s, concrete, 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 concrete. so it's, 
trying to you know modernize the building without losing his character um hey, so Stephen, i got i i do have uh one one interesting question and that is so with brickle i know with bricolati they tried very hard in their distillery to keep it very local um with your bottling with with all the all the things that you're doing with the architecture with the building are you trying to keep it to local welsh um uh, architecture with local welsh bottling labeling mm -hmm. i mean because i think that's one thing most of the people here take from from something like this is that there's that pride of being welsh it's pride of being irish scottish is that yeah. is that something that you're trying to do a lot of and I want to tack on to, to that just a bit, Stephen, a little more specifically about the, the local stuff that Fergus just talked about. I'm really curious about your malting process and, and how you're, you're going about that as well, if you're doing it locally on site, uh, floor malting, machine malting, or if you're outsourcing, uh, doing off-site malting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, in terms of local, um, so we, do, we don't do the malting locally. We, we buy the malt in from um, experienced malt uh, mal maltsters, um, people who people like Muntins and Bairds in the UK, to but to you know to our specification. Actually, when we first started uh, working at Pendarin, the only thing we did originally was we had the one copper still, uh, and and the and even the um, mashing and fermenting process was done for us by an old Welsh brewer called S A Brain and Company, uh, Brains Brains Brewery. If you if you ever been to Cardiff. Um, but then we were able to, to bring the whole, apart from the malting, we were able to bring the whole thing in-house um, and put our own mash tun in and our own fermenters. But for many years, the, the Welsh brewer did that for us. But we do all our own bottling, we do all our own packing, and everything is done uh, either at Pendarin or at a, a warehouse site, which is about two miles from Pendarin. Um, so the vast majority of people who work for us are either from the village or from the next village along. Um, you know, so it's, it is very local in that sense. But there are some things that we can't, I mean, we, the, the glass that we buy comes from, as Sam mentioned, Sava glass in France, because there's nobody in Wales who can do that, um, unfortunately. But all the, the rest of the packaging is sourced locally and, and being a local company is, is very important to us. And you wouldn't believe, you know, the, the passion that we, see around Pendarin locally is just fantastic you know people who don't even drink malt whiskey just get passionate about what we do which I find amazing it's you know the people who do drink of course um, but, but the people who don't drink as well they just love the idea of, of the brand and they're very proud of it so um, and yeah I feel I feel we're very lucky to have that kind of support. Stephen I'm a uh... I'm a little biased, but I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because uh, working for Impex, I get the question all the time. Oh, I, I've had Pendarin before. It's all right. I said, well, have you had it lately? And yeah. I, I think the big difference was when you guys stopped using the, the brains wash and started, started doing all your own fermentation at the distillery and carrying on through most of the process. Do you, do you agree with that? Um, yes, I think I think I do. I think we we recognise that being able to take control of that because brewers and distillers are a bit like uh, blues and jazz musicians. You know, they they play music, but they're different. But the vocabulary is very different. So I think once we were able to to use um, distillers malt and distillers yeast and things that they were little incremental changes that all happened. You know, around the couple of years. And I think that yeah, I think you're right. I think that that contributed to um, a step forward. Yeah, every everybody that I tell that to when they taste it, oh, this is really good. It's yeah. like they're they're having a, a evil twin and a good twin experience there or something. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. It's definitely it's definitely moved forward. Uh, I think over the last six or seven years. Stephen, how many barrels do you produce a year? So. Um, at the moment now we put in, in, in liters of alcohol, we make now around 400,000 liters of alcohol per year. That means putting into stock each year about two and a half thousand bar barrels. 
Um, and we're only selling about, we're selling about a third, just over a third of that. So we're actually building a lot of stock, Eric, at the moment. We're, we're building a, a lot of stock for the future. Um, we're filling the warehouse. You know, one of the things when you're a small distillery is trying to get a good profile on the stock, trying to get a you know, apart from the changes we made to production, one of the great things for us now is we have a lot more um, uh, quality choice, more, more benefit to select from barrels in the warehouse just because we have more of them. Whereas in the early days, when you're only making one barrel of whiskey a day, you're putting 300 barrels into stock every year. You're pretty tight on stock. You know, it's pretty difficult to have room to manoeuvre. So uh, our, our ability to, to choose and to select and to review what we've got now is much much better than it used to be how many barrels do you have sitting in in warehouses right now it's around about not far off twelve thousand barrels wow yeah um, can, can we have the, one this is the first, <laughs> yeah. Time, yeah, right? Actually. This is the first time I've, i could ever say that we have a lot more really good whiskey to sell than ever i mean over the last 15 years it's been that balancing act of you know, have we got enough to sell? Oh, we've got quite a lot of orders. Can we meet it? And oh, we got need. So it's been really quite tough trying to balance that up. And but the nice thing for me has been that um, the the board of directors at Welsh Whiskey have always said to Pendarin, it doesn't go out unless it's good enough. You know, we've always tried to adhere to that, and uh, we've got that that promise that we don't we're not under pressure to put stuff out unless it's really uh, unless it's really ready for the market. So. That, that's not a crazy question. Um, we're doing uh, barreling this year with another uh, distillery. Um, do you do a single, like a single barrel for, for a tasting group like this? Would you do a single? We'd be, yeah, we'd, we'd, obviously, we'd, we'd be delighted to do that. And uh, we'd, we'll have a chat with Sam. We do that for, for groups in, uh, in Europe. And it would be terrific to have that opportunity. Oh, Adrian, man. Anybody but you guys. Everybody else, yes. You know. That's all right. I have, I have many, <laughs> many, I have many, many aliases. Unfortunately, you've got, to be nice to Dan. you've got to be nice to Dan. Adrian doesn't exist, Dan. I do. It's and cool. It's not me, man. I, I don't live in California, man. You come out in the Southeast, completely different story, Sean. But, uh, and Ted, look at Ted. I see him down there. Jason now does like the whiskey, so they qualify. They do. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's uh, worth okay. to mention um, about, you know, first of all, Adrian, you, you have a greatest group ever. Like, I'm so much enjoying you guys. Um, oh. Worth to mention that the Bendarian Distillery is getting about 41,000 people a year as a visitors, and there's right. no any public transportation to this distillery. People get Ubers, buses, whatever. So the new distillery that Stephen mentioned, uh, actually, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's in the National Park where the, the access is much easier mm -hmm. and you guys, you know, lo lo uh, looking for more like attractive um, or, or, or better, better number of people to visit. But yeah. Fergus, when, when you do decide to go take your group there, they're going to look after you and you're going to feel like you're kings and queens. It's a really nice distillery to visit. Really one of the best distillers that I visited. And I visited about 25 for now. Thank you. Sure we always every, feel that way. I, I would figure that we could have a great bardic there with Ronnie and a few other people and we could get it. it like hopefully you have a big huge outdoor uh, fire pit that we can uh, sing songs around because we would do Absolutely. That. Or Absolutely. an echoey hall. Yeah, but as Sam says, you know, to get to Pendarin and the Brecon Beacons, is, it can be a bit challenging. Um, and we still managed to get 40,000 visitors. The plan for Llandidno is to get around about 100,000 visitors. And the big advantage in Llandidno is there, is, there are 7,000 bedrooms in, in the town, uh, which is more than in the capital city of Wales, which is, in, which is Cardiff, which is about 5,000 bedrooms. So it's, a, it's, quite a, it's quite a place that's well visited um, and you can, you know, there'll be a lot of walk-in traffic there as well as people traveling, maybe from Manchester or Liverpool or Birmingham as well, you know. You, you know, there. I did look up the Welsh National Anthem okay. and I could try to lend my horrible voice to it, if you wished. I think you do, you would do a fine job of it, I'm sure. What, what's the fight song for the uh, national rugby team? 
Well, there's a few Welsh songs, but also things like, as I said earlier, Tom Jones. Says Everyone, like. Eric, as you might know, starts with their national anthem. <laughs> I thought we moved past that. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Oh, uh, I, I, I think unless Ronnie, have you actually learned the national anthem already? Well, I have a YouTube video. I mean, that's like knowing <laughs> it, right? Well, let's try. It. Do you want to do it? We all know how YouTube is perfect for everything. That's, that's <laughs> documentation in the SEA, right? It's not on the internet. It's got to be true. Um, I mean, if Eric would like to sing, I think that'd be lovely. No, sure. No, sing a verse or two. Okay. No, Eric's oh, no, I have pre- <clears throat> Eric's allergies right now. Hey, Ronnie, if it starts with, well, we'll drink and drink and drink, I'm going to cut you off. Eric's that's all right. Steven right. up the limb for Eric. Ian. So, hey. Um, well, no, I, I so I want to actually want to do this. And this is a, a, something that's important to us. And that is for anyone that hasn't spoken up, if there's anyone that has a question, for the people that are a little shy, either send a text message, the uh, uh, chat message to us, or just go ahead and speak up now. Because I know there's a lot of people out, I mean, it's intimidating. I, I would love for anyone that, that hasn't spoken now, if you have questions or anything, do it now. Hey, Stephen, uh, in the past couple of weeks, this is about the third video tasting slash training session that I've, I've been on with you. Oh, and I want right. to say I learn more every time I listen to you. You are uh, fantastic. I enjoy it so much. And I enjoy every one of your products. Uh, they didn't you. do the Rich Oak tonight, and they didn't do the Madeira cask, which are, are two of my favorites. I didn't know about the Rich Oak before Dan sent me a sample of it. But uh, the Madeira cast I've been getting for a while. So thank you very much for all your time tonight and all your knowledge that you imparted on us. That is a pleasure. And thanks for the feedback. I really appreciate it. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Okay. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Diolchum Vaur in Welsh. Thank you. All right. Anyone else out there that wants to say something? Because, again, I, this is the one thing I want. This is one of the things I like about this is we, we – you know, you guys are open to say whatever you want, Lori or anyone else, Stephen. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly the shy guy, but, but I will say I'm, I'm one of the people that uh, that had one of your first bottlings and and, and did not like it. Okay. Um, I did like everything we've got here. Uh, I am a myth guy. And that's the best thing on the, on my table right now. Uh, that was really good, and I'll look for that when I need a bottle. It's good stuff. It's it's great to win you over, you know. It's nice that yeah. uh, and, and it's nice that you came back to it because you know you didn't have to do that. So it's, it's really good that you gave it another try. I used I to say you, I'd try any dram once, but apparently that's not true. I'll try it twice. <laughs> I, I, I will. I will. I will I'll give you the small little story that's already been told several times about why we came back to Pendaren, and that was a direct result of of Dan. Yeah. Um, I, I've been friends with Dan for quite a while and he was the rep for uh, a friend and when we went I went to a this is when I met and ultimately ended up meeting uh, Sam went to the um, Scottish Festival in, here in Pleasanton which is year 152nd or whatnot and um, I, I I went and hit the table and I, and I, I tried a bunch of, of, of different things. And he said, man, you got to try Pandaren. And I went, really? Like, <laughs> really? It's, it's, it's Welsh. And it, I, I, last time I tried it, I didn't, I, I, it was, it was okay, but it wasn't the dude. And, and we ended up sitting in a, he kind of pulled me into, they had a little private tasting booth and we sat down and it was myself, him and, um, I think his name is Rodriguez. And we tried every one of your whiskeys that they had on the table. And I was like, I am so wrong. They have, they are so good now. They, they have developed into, I, honest to God, I think your line as a whole is better than most everyone else's line as a whole. Like okay. there's not something that fails. It's not like I drank anything here and said, this one's not good, but this one's good. I think mm-hmm. you, you, you're 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 spot on with everything that you're doing. Um, Thank you, and I appreciate that. And I appreciate that it's a again small distillery, mm. a little bit more spirit. Being Welsh, I, I think historically speaking, that's just wonderful to see. Um, because again, you got Irish, you got Scottish, 
you know, now you got Welsh whiskey. Um, mm. I appreciate that. So Thank I you. really appreciate coming on. No, it's I'm, great. I'm not, not kicking you off, but I'm telling yeah. you, I appreciate you coming on. That's amazing. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Like and I, and I say, I really, it's great to have the opportunity to meet you guys. That's really, really nice. And, um, you know, I suppose hindsight is a, is a great thing, isn't it? But we, we jumped into um, getting into the States just a year or two after we'd launched. And um, with the benefit of hindsight, it was probably a bit early. You know, we didn't have the, the stock or the the depth in, in the warehouse to do it at that stage. So, um, but, I, you know, as I said a bit earlier, we wouldn't be here without Sam and Dan and Jared and, and the guys because, um, you know, we needed people who could tell our story and show the passion that we show. And we found a natural home for that. And that is absolutely brilliant for us. So we wouldn't be reaching you guys without... Um, without impact, so I'm thrilled about that. I want to just uh, kind of, a, you know, steer towards Edwin by saying that without people like him, we would never be where we are. I remember Dan connecting us. That was Highland Games in Pleasanton. And um, since then, you know, he would bring himself and group of people to all my tastings and would walk away with bottles of Pindarian. Right. Yeah, that really, really appreciate it. And like mm -hmm. I said, brilliant. It's ball to us. Thanks. Yeah, we, have to, we have to figure out how to get them on into Total Wines and some of the places here because I have, like, I have to go to all the way to San Francisco to get bottles now. Yeah, you know what happens when you tell them, man, them. is you fill out a form and you hope that the this person that looks at it is smart enough to realize what it is. Unfortunately, I can tell you that not every regional person is smart. So I mean, that's just unfortunate. That that's the way it works. I've been, able to, I've been able to find them at my total wine. Are they, are they not? Uh, they, yeah, wine? like three of them, right? Because like for Southeast, I have three of them registered, but I've tried to do like beyond that. And it's very like, it's sporadic. I mean, they hire new people every three, four months. Yeah. So you're talking to someone who's like, oh, like here's a Magnum wine. Like, what do you mean? What's a Magnum bottle of wine, you know? So uh, that's where we're running across a lot. So, yeah. I mean... I mean, this was before the shutdown about three months ago, but at my total wine and HB, they had it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, they're, it's they're really fine. regional, which is super weird, man. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. It depends it on whether or not the buyer for their store likes scotch or not. If they don't, you have to nudge them and remind yeah. them that, hey, a lot of your customers like this stuff, and it's worth the price difference. Yeah, I've, I've had the argument even here in um, Florida, man, because there's a lot of, there's a large Welsh community here in Florida, and it's amazing. It's like pulling teeth. I'm trying to get blood from a stone just to get them to do anything. It's amazing. I've never seen so much resistance, but, you know. Well, I, I, will, I, will, I will renew, and, and I'll, I'll talk to the uh, Total Wine buyer and just say, hey, I'd like, I'd like more of this, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll get them into yeah. the Total Wine in Pleasanton, I'm sure. Don't try to sell you on Rock Hill or whatever it is they sell. <laughs> Raz, don't complain. We have one in the entire state, okay? And it's in Knoxville by Ted. Yeah, but you live in Tennessee. Like, okay. if it isn't from Tennessee. He's far, he's far, he's far from, from there, man. But, hey, uh, Sean, do you know where Hold Alexa on. is? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. For the record, those of us in Southern California looking for it, they have it at High Time Wine. Yeah. Yes. They have everything at High Time. So no. go to High Time. Get your there. There. They've got the Celt, the Welsh, and the uh, Madeira. That's all. Nice. Down. Uh, you have so to call in advance and pick it up at the door. But if you if you if you buy it online, you can just go down and pick it up. It's easy peasy. <laughs> From the SoCal people, go ahead and toss the link into the the chat there, Raz or or Ian, whoever has that link to High Time Wine to order. And, and uh, I'll, I'll tell you guys real quick. Bottom line: Sam is uh, I have, Sam is a friend on Facebook. Um, I have never, I don't know if Sam ever says no to anyone, uh, to be a friend. So you just send him a message, say your friends of mine, uh, of, 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 of Fergus slash Adrian. And, um, I'm looking for this whiskey. And if he's, if he's wrapping it and definitely with Pendaren, he will point you to the store or his individual rep that will get you the bottle. Um, and in some cases, I believe, uh, there was somebody who uh like he even said it's too hard to get into that state but you, here's what i think you should do so you can get it in the state so um 
that's probably the best way to go is is become friends with Sam, man. That guy is he's he is he's a prince. He's the he's the Fergus. best. Sam is the man. Best I've ever met. Uh, kudos to to Dan. He was able to get it into Total Wine, but you know it's great big chain stores, you know, corporate accounts, but we really keen into smaller accounts like, you know, High Time that you mentioned, Mixing Glass in the same area, uh, Orange County, you know, some Bend Dome uh, stores in, in, in uh, LA area, uh, Silver Lake. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of specialty stores that, you know, San Francisco, you got the nicest store, the, the whiskey shop, they have the whole line, a range of, you know, Pendarian available, all the expressions that are available in U.S., including their single casks. Um, also, you know, they, they, they ship. So, you know, I know that, Ted, you're trying to get it in your area, and I really appreciate you being the ambassador of Pendarian. I do appreciate that, but, you know, who I'm going to refer to you, to Dan. He's the guy. He's the boss in the area. But, guys, yeah, let me know where you reside, where you prefer to shop, and I'll make sure that you're directed, you know, Jared's got a great uh, customer base in Middle Atlantic, like we're, we're all over the country, but we're not in Costco, we're not in, you know, big chain stores, but we are there, we are there. That, that really, Sam, Sam to, to your point and, and to Adrian's point as well, and, and Stephen, I can't express this deeply enough, it, it really is where, where groups like this really, really come into play. In my experience in the industry, it's all about connecting with the people who are passionate about what you do with the same passion as what you do, what you bring to the, the table. When yeah. you start connecting people with that same passion is mm -hmm. where you start getting people like Sam, like Dan, Jared mm -hmm. coming in and, and really helping uh, drive your spirit to the right people. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't express my thanks enough to you for joining us tonight especially knowing the hour <laughs> that it is in Wales right now for you. Um, the fact that you've given up so many hours of sleep to come chat with us uh, definitely speaks to the passion that you hold for what you do. And no, it, it really is appreciated across the board. It's a, it's a pleasure. And uh, despite my um, advancing age, I, I have a young newborn baby in the house, so I'm not used to getting sleep anyway. So you. <laughs> I did <laughs> actually queue up uh, and try and learn a horrible way to sing the Welsh national anthem if it would make you happy. All of my friends will probably laugh at me. That's good. I love it. I think at this point in time, we need to do it, right? Is do that it, why you, you're, awesome. just, you're just going to throw me on the fire like that? At least one round, Ronnie. Do it. Do round. it. All right. Oh. Let's, let's see oh. what I can do. All right. <clears throat> my probably the worst thing ever <laughs> that was good you, you nailed the melody spot on you got the melody um, the <laughs> i'm words, sorry the words yeah, the were words, weird the words but i mean bloody hell that was fantastic <laughs> oh, man, that not was... knowing the song at all amazing <laughs> all right Ronnie, way to crush it oh, from what, what Thank you. Heard, welsh is like swallowing a bunch of bottles, so. <laughs> hey everybody let's drink to me crushing yeah, that absolutely. song by which i mean killing it in a bad way so ronnie what i think we need to do is go over there and and sing it in person 
at the you distillery so? and it'll sound much better. I'm, I am confident when I say that. Oh, that okay. good. You, you, you need to come to the, um, uh, the, the Principality Stadium, as it's known now in, in Cardiff, and sing with the, the, the Welsh, 70,000 passionate Welsh people. It would blow you away, I'm telling you now. It would be I know they would. I, I literally only knew about this song about 20 minutes ago. So, I mean, you, 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 you named the melody, it, like, it was brilliant. Really good. Um, really good. Nicely done. I want to find somebody to suck up to in all this. So, oh, well, well, Stephen, uh, just on a side note, as many years ago, I was at a local pub, very quiet, and all, all of a sudden this bus pulls up and it offloads people from probably five years old to late seventies. And it was the Welsh choir looking okay. for a place to eat and sing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And they got their food, they got their drink, and then they started singing. And I have never heard anything so amazing. And they were all just great singers. Well, the, the idea of the Welsh male voice choir is a, a big tradition. Um, every couple of years, every two years, they have a, a festival in the Albert Royal Albert Hall in London, a festival of male voice choirs, and it's quite remarkable. Uh, you know, they, they're not just Welsh, the choirs from all around the world now will, will come and, and sing together. And uh, it's quite a sound, it's a different, different kind of sound. It's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, I, I didn't do it justice. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you did. <laughs> Honestly, um, reality in 20 minutes, brilliant, fantastic. I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and, and again, we're, we're about an hour and a half or the end. No, we're over two hours. Oh, my God. Um, which is, I, it's amazing. And you already told me when you sent your email saying I can go on forever and we can go on forever as well, sir. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I want to do something kind of special for the group, and that is something that Raz already threw out. And so I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to do this, and that is, uh, if you have any left of the Celtic, please pour it in your glass. Um, hey, Fergus. Yes. Take the bottles out from the front of your face. Mine are empty. A little Ford. Come on now. Um, you got to rub it in, huh? The, you you, you have to understand what I think that you're going to do. I've been getting like a. Uh, uh, Sam's been sending me uh, Pendaren whiskey for a while now, so I've got more than just the five tasters. Well, fuck, send me um, some. But anyways, for, for anyone that has the Celtic in their hand, and if you don't, grab a dram, um, because I, I think what Raz said about this reminding him about Mayala and, and it, her being really close to her anniversary of her passing, I think it, it's, it's proper that we should do it right now. My drink is pink. Oh. I think that counts. Irish counts as Celtic. Um, you know, it's about family. That's what it means. And and whiskey, whiskey has created family for me, and that's why I love whiskey. Um, Mayala was a, a beautiful, beautiful woman who um, made us all a little bit happy, a little bit crazy, and a little bit wonderful. I made and, the, uh, crazy is a good word. <laughs> made the new song for her. I miss the fuck out of her, and I, I just, I, I've been looking at, as I scroll down the people to invite, there's more and more people that are on that list of people that I'll never see again, and I can't fucking handle it anymore. I hope you guys have long life and, and love and happiness, and love you all, and I'm thankful that you're here. We love okay. you. Salancha. Salancha. Thanks, brother. Oh. I made the new song for her. Oh. Can you sing it? I love to hear it. Um, what? Can you sing it? Said you made a new song. I love to hear it. Please. Oh. No? Um, Maybe? No. Not right now. So, um, sign off. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Good night, Heather. Bye. So, originally, Bye, um, Bye. At Great Western uh, War, which happens in October in the SCA, um, we they had started um, the idea of a tournament, and the lady who sponsored it passed away not to COVID, but to um, what was it? Uh, bird flu. 
H1N1. S H one N one. Our my friend Kitty. Um, and we were all shocked. Couple. I mean, I was only like, I mean, we were twenty seven. Her birthday was the day after mine. It was H one N one swine flu. Yeah. So um, we still had the tournament, and we kind of um, invited everybody to come and be a part of it as. Um, for the first one was a memorial, but the next ones were all about, uh, you know, kind of embodying the things that she loved. And then, like a couple years ago, our dear friend who was part of our whiskey club, Miala, and Raz, if you look behind Raz's shoulder, he's holding the banner I commissioned for her which was her um, her uh, heraldry, sorry. Um, she had Dilla. made me, she had made me promise that she would be my rapier champion the next time that I got to go to Kitty's tourney and then she passed away. So Raz carried that banner. Um, but so all of this really comes down to like, we all see each other as family and and when we lose our family it's terrible um you know it's it's hard and part of the most wonderful and horrible thing is that when you extend yourself to have such a broad family you extend yourself to lose a much broader family and a lot of us have experienced that lately. Um, so uh, when it, this, when we lost Miala, it happened to be that um, th it was the tenth year of the tournament we created for Colfina, and so I reworked the words, uh, well, tipsy in our camp, as one does, um, to make it a little bit more about um, sort of the things that that we're talking about because it was no longer about one person because we lost so many. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't need to sing. If people want me to, I can. Everybody's all drinking now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sorry, man. Well, you kind of drove us to it. I did yeah. drink, so I made this. I call to those to whom chivalry is all. I speak in the name of the rooms. I call to all whose virtue is as worthy as those whom the Valkyries chose. Hold forth your banner and fight now with honor. Show through your deeds that your worth shall hold true. Let grace be your key word and faith be your north star. Always remind your heroes why they chose you. Courtesy speaks much more softly than valor, but deeds hold much more weight than words. Let your sword song ring to honor the roses. Let chivalry be the loud message that is heard. Hold forth your banner and fight now with honor. Show through your deeds that your words shall hold true. Let grace be your key word, faith be your North Star. Always remind your rose why they chose you. Those who have left us serve now as examples, shining a light to what's true and what's right. Look to the Valkyries and honor your consort. Prove now your work with both wisdom and might. Hold forth your banner and fight now with honor. Show through your deeds that your worth shall hold true. Let grace be your key word. Faith be your north star. Always remind heroes why they chose you. Wonderful. 
That was gorgeous. That's all. Sorry, guys. Um, I don't want to make it somber. Guys, <laughs> you didn't mean to be that heavy, Stephen. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I was Listen, it's, it's about 4.36 a.m. where Stephen is. Um, maybe yeah. if you want to see him, if you want to see him still married, not divorced, I think we should let him go. Absolutely. Otherwise, we'll have to find some other better half for him. <laughs> oh, that, that Stephen, was, thank you very much. It was a great. Pleasure. That, was, that was beautiful, but Ronnie, that was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I got a quick question. Stephen, thank you. Next time you, next time you join us, I'll do a better job at your uh, national anthem. No, you did you did great, and, and I really appreciate being invited in uh, to your family. Thank you. I, I really really thank appreciate. You so it. Much, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. It's been awesome. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, kida. Thank you. Yakida. Yeah, Yakida. Take care then. Bye 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 for now. Bye, -bye. bye Stephen. You know what? I've got some stuff in the morning as well, so good night all.